Well, good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone feeling? I'm just so grateful and honored right here. I'm going to get more details right now with a loving, loving sister, Miss Mayim Vega. Miss Mayim is going to be sharing all of the wonderful tips and so forth because she's the former NASA scientist. She's turned into the holistic healer. <laughs> and has empowered countless people with the expertise in holistic health. So she's going to give us the valuable insights on the diet, herbs, and the supplements, and nobody has to minimize. You know, she can manage all of us with epilepsy. We can be enhancing our lives and just overcoming all the other challenges or making sure you just have the well-being in life. That's what you were saying, a good well-being, right? Baim Vega is trying to just give all of these wonderful tips to all of us on what's that. So, Mayim, like what are some of the key dietary things that you want people to enhance and just get into the better management of their condition? Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, maybe your, your, your listeners already know this, um, but um, did you know that the keto diet was originally developed to help manage um, epilepsy and seizures. Mm, the chemo? I didn't know. Keto, keto, K E T O. Oh, keto. I, I hadn't heard of that one. Yeah. Um, is it's, that a it's, vegan type thing? No. So the keto diet is basically a high fat diet with, with low carbohydrates. <laughs> and um, I don't know that, I, you know, a, a lot of people use it right now for various different things, like uh, especially weight loss and, um, you know, different things. But the original purpose for the ketogenic diet was to help manage epilepsy. And you can look it up, you know, in history, that's what it was um, originally made for. In, in the early 20th century, it was, it was created as a treatment for epilepsy. And it was, it was rooted in an understanding of um, the effects of fasting on the body and also the, important, the importance of Fat, good fat for the brain. Oh. So <laughs> that's just so weird. I'm not used to fat um, as a good thing because I'm like, what? I try to stay away from all the fat. I don't want to hear. I'm just I'm surprised you're saying the good fat. Like, what's a good fat? Yeah, isn't that interesting? That's so not, um, like, the, what? <laughs> keto, the keto diet used to be very popular for epilepsy until the invention of epileptic drugs in the mid 20th century and that's when people stopped paying attention to the keto diet because it's much easier to take uh, a pill it's, uh, much, it's much easier to take a pill right but um you know sometimes those those things have side effects keto diet is high fat but not bad fat and so i think that's important like don't go out and start buying French fries all the time. That's bad fat, right? Um, good fats are things like butter, tallow, and ghee. These are actually, I know, I don't know, this might sound very surprising to you, but these things are the kinds of fats that our ancestors used to cook with. Butter, tallow, ghee. In India, for example, ghee is widely used. It's clarified butter. It's, you know, and, and, um, Avocados are another very good good fat. Um, oh, fat. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Avocados are a good fat, and there's also nuts, but not when they are um, in their unnatural form. Like, not like um, most nut oils are bad, like peanut oil. Um, you know these kinds of things. I'm just talking about nuts. Like when you eat nuts in their whole form, this mm -hmm. is a good fat. Okay. Seeds, uh -oh. you know, <laughs> sprinkle seeds in your salad. That's a good fat. Um, some good fats that you can cook with are coconut oil. Um, this is actually a good fat and it's a very ancient, ancient fats been used in, in, you know, in my country where I'm from the Philippines for thousands of years and, and also olive oil, but olive oil is not good for cooking. Olive oil is better raw and, um, it's good to get a high, high quality olive oil because there's a lot of, you know, imitation olive oil that's mixed with bad fats these days. So you got to make sure that it's high quality. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, these kinds of oils, they have MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, and these are very healthy. These are healthy fats and they're good for maintaining ketosis and they feed your brain. Your brain actually 
runs on fats primarily, not proteins or carbohydrates. Now, your body can convert, you know, proteins or carbohydrates into into fat that your brain can use. But when you when you consume good fats directly, then your body doesn't have to take that extra step to feed your brain. But your brain primarily runs on fat. And bad fats. <laughs> yeah, there's good fats and there's bad fat. There's bad fats. And also c- carbohydrates. Carbohydrates aren't are not bad, but your body doesn't need a lot of it unless you're an athlete or you do a lot of physical work. Your body actually doesn't need a lot of carbohydrates. So the keto diet is based on high fat, good fats, um, low carbohydrates, and moderate protein. And there's a lot of different ways, you know, to get um, good protein. <clears throat> and so um, the keto diet's basically been been proven to reduce or in some cases eliminate seizures. And so it can also enhance cognitive function. Good fats can enhance cognitive function. So it's not just for people with epilepsy, but if you have some kind of um, brain issues, let's say um, dementia or Alzheimer's or, um, you know, things like that, it's, it's, it's just good. Bipolar. Yes, I believe so. I have, I've, I've been diagnosed with bipolar. (laughs) <laughs> and um good fats help me help me feel balanced you know help me feel more even keel instead of extreme um also increase energy levels because um fat just stays in your system longer and you can you can burn it slowly and good fats are just good overall it's it, good fats are healthy and so uh, we can go into supplements after that um a lot of really good supplements for um, epilepsy include magnesium. <clears throat> Most people are actually deficient in magnesium, not just people with epilepsy, but it's it's good. It's very good for your brain. It's very good for your neurological processes. It can help you uh, get a better night's sleep. It can even help you with bowel movements. <laughs> I mean, magnesium is is really um, important for a really. lot of different things. But, you know, getting good sleep is also important for dealing with mental health issues, including, um, you know, epilepsy. And um, also vitamin D is really good. And I, I really don't think but taking a pill is the best way to get vitamin D. But if you don't go outside in the sunshine enough, then, you know, maybe you do need to supplement with vitamin D. But going out in, the, in God's sunshine, you know, that's really the best way to get vitamin C. And then also omega-3. And omega three is another good fat, um, but it, it's it, it's it's very popular in supplement form these days. You can get omega three fatty acids in a pill, and that's going to be you know another another good fat would be fat from fish, fatty fish, especially things like salmon and mackerel. But a lot of people, you know, they don't eat a lot of salmon or mackerel, you know, um, and or they don't like it. You know, some people don't like seafood at all. So in those cases, you know, omega-3 is really good um, as a supplement. Um, I was hearing that the, um, the fish are the really strong, strong, you know, protein angles to, to go for. You know, you're doing your fish and so forth. And of course, no beef, but just making sure that you do the, um, you know, good one, like, you know, maybe turkey or chicken or something like that. Some slight ones there. But um, that the that the fish is the stronger one. If you do the salmon, especially or catfish, and you know, making sure that you have the um good ones into your um your angles. That's why it's all appealing to me to make a you know roast them. Yeah, sa- salmon ma- and mackerel, uh, I think, are, are especially the two best ones. I love salmon. Do you like salmon? Mm-hmm. No, salmon's great. Yeah, I do okay, salmon. Good. I think I'm doing salmon. <laughs> salmon. I do catfish as well. But it's just like you, know, you could just uh, do all the different ones. Sometimes I'm hearing about the yeah, I got that other one um, R because I just go over to the uh, one, the store that Costco one and see about which um, fish is available. So <laughs> it's cool. It doesn't take a lot of time to make fish. So I love. Oliver. Yeah, yeah, especially if it's defrosted already. And then, um, and then it, if you go to if you go to Costco. They have um, the frozen kind, and it comes in like prepackaged individual, you know, things. Right. So it's perfect for just one or two people. And it's really important also to get the wild salmon, the wild um, uh, caught salmon, not the 
farm-raised salmon because the farm-raised salmon, they have to inject it with things to make it pink because if it's not eating its natural diet in the wild, it doesn't get that nice, healthy pink color. So they, they inject it with things to make it more pink and they give it antibiotics and that you don't want all that in your body. So you, mm. you, you make sure you stick with wild, wild. caught, fresh um, salmon. The yeah. wild fishes uh, are better than the actual farm raised ones. Yes, farm raised is not is not as healthy. It's going to be cheaper. Farm raised is going to be cheaper, but it's not going to be healthier. The, the the fish that um live in the wild and eat their natural diet that is the kind that is going to have the most amount of good fats and less amount of antibiotics in them. Hmm. That's pretty good. I'm grateful that you're saying that. Definitely putting that note down. That you said, and Costco has it. Wild. So. Right. Yeah. You're saying wild um, fishes are better than farm raised. That is yes. important to know that one. Wow. Yes. Because, yeah, you know, like you said, the trick, I did not know. <laughs> of course, I don't know that. I'm always loving to get organic and we love getting the farm raised. Organic's so, great. Yeah. But it's just that, you know, you see the um, farm. So you're saying farm raised is not good because that's fake. You know, it's not coming from. Right. For, not, fish. Not ocean, yeah. right for, for, for fish. For fish. For fish. It's yeah. not coming in the ocean. So it's just like, oh, okay. Well, it might be in the ocean, but it's the Included to a, a small part of the ocean, kind of like you know when they do the um, when you do chickens, you can either get the pasture raised chickens. That means they get to roam around in the wild and they get to to eat worms and like their natural diet. But then when you don't get the pasture raised chicken, um, then that means they're cooped up in these little stalls and they are just fed like uh, grains, you know, and they're 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 unhealthier because um they're they're in it they live in a very small space and they're stepping on each other and pooping on each other and and stuff like that so they also need more antibiotics because their lifestyle is not is not natural and healthy and they get sicker so you also want pasture raised chickens so grateful for your one because what did um nasa like you said that you're a former nasa scientist like what did that teach you over there mm -hmm. Did that teach you something about this health angle or you just, um, you know, just had some. Well, you know, yeah, I think um, as a computer, I was a computer scientist at NASA. And I think the, um, the, what has carried over from those days is just my pursuit of number one knowledge, you know, I was always learning, always learning something new because in the computer science field, things are always changing. There's always new technology. So in order to be, yeah. you know, competent in, in the field, you had to always learn, um, constantly be learning new technology and libraries and uh, for, for these coding languages. And I think that's the same a as a holistic healer. If you want to be truly competent, you've got to keep, you. there's always new things, new threats, new toxins out in the world, new diet fads, new health fads, and you've always got to be learning about them so you can um, discern, you know, is this good? Is it bad? Is it maybe good for certain people, but not other people? You know, different things like that. So always be learning. And I think the second principle that was really important that I learned from my computer science days is that um when something's not working, you keep trying, you keep trying and you keep trying something else until you find the answer. You know, we'd always get these uh, bugs in our software that um, made them fail at a certain point. Or if you did something to it, it would just fail and you'd have to figure it out and you'd have to try different things. And I, I, I have that same approach to holistic health and healing where, you know, you learn something, you try it, it didn't work. Well, Maybe adjust it. Maybe try something new. Maybe a little more of this and a little less of that. You know, just keep trying. Don't give up. The answer is there. I believe the answer is always there. Um, and I think the journey of discovering your path to healing, that's that's a beautiful journey. Embrace the journey. Don't be frustrated that you have to take the journey. That's your that's your that's your journey. You know, that's the path that you have to take in life and and you can you can be happy on the journey or you can be upset that you have to take the journey, but being upset yeah. about having to take the journey, that's not going to help. It's not going to help with anything because yeah. your mindset I mean, your mindset about the journey is a big part of the healing process, you know? 
That's the whole point, but hello, that's why I live on the butterfly portion. You might want to say breaking the cocoon, because that's the whole thing. We have to enjoy the whole thing of life, and then when we break out of the big old challenge, obviously, we're going to be the human butterfly that's going to shine off humongous, humongous rewards come to us when we don't give up. And it's awesome and amazing about just feeling great, because greater things must be coming when we don't give up. <laughs> it is so awesome and amazing because I just love to just relax and be joyful and just free your mind. The rest <laughs> will follow. So, hey. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I, lo I love that song. But I just love what you were talking about. Um, I'm hearing some things about some herbal strategies that you can confer or confirm, but you can relate for us. You can just give us tips on some herbal strategies that we can be busting. Like what herbs are some strong ones there for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So epilepsy. I studied herbalism with from a few different um, uh, schools, but the one that I appreciate the most is when I studied with Master John R. Christ Master Herbalist John R. Christopher, and um, he's passed away already. But his school his school is is still there, and his son is running it, and they've got a website called herballegacy.com and it looks really old and outdated but the information that is on there is just very very, very valuable and, and it's still fine healing from his formulas even today you know myself and my students so um first of all he 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 recommends avoiding stimulants you know like um ca caffeine and sugar um wow. <laughs> And, you know, sleep is very important for your brain. So messing with it, with these stimulants are, are you know, are, are, are just going to make it worse. Hello, and he also recommends to make it This is like the other countries but, understand that, um, that sleeping angle. Because I just love when I did my study abroad in Spain. That's when I learned to take my naps. Because over here, mm -mm, <laughs> yeah. can't wait to stop doing naps. And then you go over there, the whole country shuts down from 2 to 5. They take their biggest meal at 2 and then take a long nap from 3 to 5 and then go back to work. I was forced to do it, but I was like... Oh, when I do it, I'm in love with my naps. I'm still I'm doing my naps now and doing my bigger meals in the earlier afternoon portion so that mm -hmm, I can just take a light, you know, my snacks or my fruits in the evening time. So uh, it's just awesome. Yeah, they know how to do it, huh? I wish we could adopt that. Yeah. That's why I love traveling. And when you see the other country moves, it's like, oh, that's a wiser move for your body. So a uh, lot. You see all of them. I was surprised in Spain, but I definitely got to go see more about Japan because I was in J China, but not in China long enough. But how all of them are skinny folks. So hello. <laughs> Just got to see the other moves they bust. And yeah, they always doing the chow mein. So let me see about, like you said, carbohydrates must not be so bad. So that's a little like, little move that can be busting. That's what I'm thinking I'm doing as my Yeah, you know what? I, I think part of the reason why the Asian culture is... Um, is skinnier is because we um we don't we don't do a lot of uh sugars number one well, and we, we do, do a group of people if we stop acting america has so much sugar yeah too much sugar and then number two we don't we do a lot of home-cooked foods and it's so we don't we don't you keep saying we but you mean they oh but you're from japan that's I'm like, Asian. I'm I'm, I'm oh, Asian. Okay. okay so that's... like, I just feel like the Asian, the Asian Asians are usually just smaller than Americans, <laughs> Westerners. Exactly. All you guys are skinny and jaw. Like, yeah. Where you from? Where are you from? I'm from the Philippines. You said the Philippines. Oh, that's why you did say that earlier. And so my ancestors are from Malaysia, and so oh. that's you know we we share we share a common ancestry with Chinese and Japanese and you know like uh, just a lot of the Asian nations over there but um but i think that's the i think that's one of the the reasons why we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of obesity is is number one we're not we're like if you if you take if you take um asian ice cream like filipino ice cream or japanese ice cream or something like that and then you compare it with american ice cream american oh, ice cream is going to be much sweeter exactly yeah and um we we also um yeah we don't we it's all about home cooked food, and well, not a not a lot of uh, fast food. the bad fats and the the fried foods. And we don't they don't we don't add a lot of chemicals, you know. 
to to our food to make it more appetizing and make us uh, eat past our our limit, you know, our natural our mm-hmm. limit. I, exactly. I think those are some of the key things there. Well, congrats. Oh, wow, you got the girl for the good foundation because foundations are critical. And I'm so grateful for the discipline that I was got because we didn't know, weren't allowed to have all the sugar in the house. Yeah. And I stay disciplined where I stay away from it. But it's just like so hard for everybody else who just does it on a regular basis. And sugar is the biggest drug. <laughs> So. Yeah, 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 right. It's it's more addictive than cocaine, they say. Hello. But you know what? It's, and it's not just Asians, like Africans are very skinny too. Not not skinny like no, they're not skinny like Asians, but they're not obese. Right. And they're muscular. Like they've got oh, great great bodies. Like we're all designed frames. differently. So they got more junk in the trunk, but they definitely still are thinner on the whole angles and everything. They might be tall. Africans? Africans don't have more junk in the trunk. No, no, they well, no, I'm talking about, oh, sorry. I'm talking about Africans in Africa. Right. So they, they have. But well, I'm, maybe not all the tribes, but a lot of African tribes, they have they have excellent bodies, excellent frames, and very muscular, uh, more muscular than, than Asians. Um, and they also, the, the native African diet is also very healthy, very pure, you know, very free of all these um of sugar and processed foods and additives that are bad for your weight and your brain. <laughs> you know? That's essential. I, I hear you. I mean, everything is just a habit. So it's just about what you're doing regularly and so forth. So it's just, that's great to, <laughs> to see that one over there. Because mm, all these, yeah. I only also, to- a lot of these these third world countries are still very poor. And I, you know, so, sometimes you think, oh, that's that's bad. But in some ways, it's good because they don't have the money for the junk food. You know, they're like all they have money for is the basic, you know, rice and fish and vegetables, and they just got to cook it naturally because they don't have money for the ice cream and the cookies and like, like all these junk Thank food you. and snacks. And right. so, just for that reason alone, sometimes, you know, these not Asia, Africa, India, you know, wherever, um, a lot of times they're healthier because. They're poor, and so they just have to stick with the basics, and sometimes that's really, really good. I hear you. Hey, hello. That's when we get to learn and all oh, be uh, grateful for some of the situations we've had, because mm, that's how you can stay disciplined when you stay away from all those sugars. Hello, <laughs> sugar is yeah. the biggest drug. So, I but let, let me get back to um, Master Herbalist John R. Christopher's um, herbal formula is that okay the herbs okay Mm -hmm. yeah so he has an herbal formula that um that people say is basically um helps them um helps helps them avoid uh uh, uh, the seizure basically it 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 get rid not gets rid of the how could i say it like the normal triggers that they have they're not they don't trigger them as much if they are taking um this formula and so there's a tincture this formula is which one yeah there's a tincture there's a tincture there's this formula and it's got i'm going to name off the herbs now i have i have this written down all written down if you go to my website aruka.com a-r-u-k-h.com a-r-u-k-a-h.com slash epilepsy there's a free ebook that i have on um it's called the holistic guide to epilepsy thing that i talk about like the keto diet and the supplements and the, the these herbal formulas it's it's on that free ebook so you, know, you can download it there but basically this specific tincture is it has the the herb skull cap um which is known for its calming effects on the nervous system and um, which makes it beneficial for anxiety and and nervousness which which can be a trigger so it's got um lobelia which is a um which is a uh, use in native american herbalism um they actually smoked it but you know this i'm not saying you should smoke it it's in a tincture you can make a tincture out of it and this lobelia is an anti-spasmodic herb and um it's got a little bit of cayenne just to promote circulation if you don't want to put that in it you don't you don't have to but it's it is good for circulation and it enhances the power of the other herbs and it's also got valerian root now valerian root you can get that separately as an herb very easily from like sprouts or whole foods or something like that 
and um, it has sedative effects, which helps you with sleeping also, and um, you know, reducing an- and nervous anxiety. And it's also got black cohosh and hops, which are also um, included for their antispasmodic properties, which help to relax muscle and nerve pains, which are which are great for epilepsy. So that's a tincture. So a tincture is. It's an alcohol-based um, herbal formula. So they ba- basically they put a bunch of herbs together and then they use alcohol to draw out the herbal properties. And so you don't have to take a lot. You just have to take like maybe one or two dropperfuls. And if you don't want the alcohol, you can put it in um, like uh, boiled water and then it'll it'll make the alcohol dissipate. So you don't have to have any alcohol um, in it. But that's um, that's a powerful formula that, that um, people, some people with epilepsy say um, helps them to not have seizures anymore, you know, and, and everyone's different. I, and that's in, that might not work for everyone, but it has worked for some people. And there's some other herbs also um, that, you know, that he, that he recommends um, um, blue vervain, skullcap, black cohosh. Um, some of those are in the tincture formula and then other um popular herbs i've already mentioned valerian root you can get that alone as a tea but also passion flower pa- passion flower um has uh, anti-convulsant properties so it could reduce the 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 frequency of um of seizures ginkgo biloba is um known to enhance cognitive um function and um, people have explored it to to help with epilepsy, and it's also got antioxidant properties. So it's it's good for your brain. It's good for antioxidants. It's good for a lot of things. Ginkgo biloba. We actually grow g- ginkgo biloba in our um, in our front yard. And also, if, if if people are open to this, I know some people aren't open to this, but CBD, you know, medical cannabis, has also received attention for its effectiveness in reducing seizures. Um, so those are As different. A herb, CBD, because I've, I've heard of CBD several times, but well, just, it comes from an herb. Yeah, it no, comes it from, come from comes herb. from cannabis, which is an herb. Mm. So I, you know, I, I have mixed feel. You know, I think it is good for certain, you know, certain times. But um, I personally, I, sometimes I have taken it at times for um, for different things like pain. It's it's good for pain management sometimes. But you know, I don't like to take it on a regular basis, or a, um, or yeah, I don't like to take it on a regular basis because it, it does it affects my cognitive function and it makes me not very productive. <laughs> even though it's CB, wow. even though it's CBD, even though it doesn't have any of the THC, even though it's the legal kind, you know, it can still have some effects that you might not want. But. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes you know, people that have found really barbain or something herb that you um, were saying, but you blue can have the other two ones so that other folks can um can show you and and is that, is that how they follow you over there at aruka um, dot com? Yeah, if they download that, um, it's actually on a G doc. It's on a Google doc. Um, here, I don't know if I can. Let me share my screen. Real- oh, I can't share my screen. Just, um, put the other um, herbs that you would like to mention. That's how folks will follow you. And hello, that's how people will see that you're sincere and you would like to help. Yeah, yeah. All, all the herbs and everything that I talked about is in that book, the, the Holistic Guide to Epilepsy that I that I oh, compiled. So okay. they can get that at that that website. Oh, okay. That's coming because books are essential because you know how much I love to share the other book, (laughs) the famous one there that gets folks to be aware. You know, you guys seeing me right here when I had the first surgery, but that's where you get the story of Prince, Socrates, Julius Caesar, and Floja having the epilepsy as well. And (laughs) when they can see that, oh, it's a sincere and they can get the true story, but my story in there as well, it's like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) just be up front with people and get more people to be relaxed that, oh, this is the simple steps to take with epilepsy. So it's just so important to see the simple ways of handling it. And hey, it's no way. So these are great herbal moves, I would like to say. So I mean, you got any other habit tip something for yours <laughs> yeah i mean like very basic things sleep is very important you know working through your 
issues that may be stressful in your life, you know, um, also just being willing to, oh, for overall health, you know, it's for everyone, not just for people with epilepsy, but knowing how to manage your, your emotions, you know, and understanding that emotions aren't good or bad. They're just part of the human experience. You know, it's okay to be sad. Sometimes it's okay to be mad. Sometimes it's okay to be any single, every, every emotion. We don't have to be happy all the time. You know, it's okay. It's okay to experience emotions. Um, and just, just the rest and the sunshine and the exercise. Those are just overall good health tips for no matter what, what kind of health issues that, that you're facing. Well, that's a good point, but I, you know, we all just remember how um, epilepsy uh, the ex- exercise is on the DL because I just do all my walks and remember all of us with epilepsy feel strong and powerful because we just simply stating how we use our BMW over everybody else's, and that's bike, metro, and walking, keeping mm-hmm. the body toned, keeping us looking awesome and wonderful. <laughs> And yes, at the party, dancing, when you're dancing all over and over again, hello, you're using your body all the time. And when you're taking the steps, everybody else who's getting on the escalator and just stands there. Hello, would you just take the steps and go up? <laughs> and yeah. those are the steps to do it over there. And that's what I learned when I was going, when I went to get my experience in China. Everybody over there and they tends to be doing the squats for the restroom. So hello, I just squat since 2008. I don't sit down on any toilet at home or anywhere. I'm making sure I'm squatting over it so that I can use it real quick and that forces you to do the wonderful moves. So who cares? <laughs> yeah, it is, it is the best position for <laughs> using the restroom. Hello, it's just awesome. We just keep a body. Mm-hmm. On the DL, you do everything on the DL and you don't even think about it. And just like, oh, <laughs> it's a cool habit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is That's amazing. It, oh, my goodness. <laughs> but what was it called? Oh, yeah. So that's why I want you to share your um, your your book title when they can go, where they can get it at the what, website. Mm. Yeah, the, the website is ruka.com slash epilepsy. And the book title is The Holistic Guide to Epilepsy, Nutrition, Lifestyle, and Natural Treatments. And it's just a it's just an ebook. It's just on a Google Doc. You know, it's not George was your your title was where? The Holistic Guide to Epilepsy. Oh, okay. nu- nutrition, lifestyle, and natural treatments. So it's not um it's not on Amazon or anything like that. It's just on my website. It's not long. It's not a long book. It's just a really short, you know, book. On the um, what I'll, g- we- I'll give you a direct link to it too. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the folks who are watching right here want to see it, so they're just going to go over to um, the thing right here. Oh, yeah, the Aruka dot a r u k h right right k h dot com slash epilepsy, and they're going to see it from that spot there. So okay, mm-hmm. well, hey, those are critical in explaining. So at least we can see up front and can get more details with you. That's awesome. This my game is just showing the good details there. Oh, but that's why you can just go over the ones with me and that one. Um, oh my goodness, <laughs> breaking the cocoon. That's a great name. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where your book is at, right? Yeah, it's at that website, you know, you can kind of see the background. <laughs> that's an awesome name. I like that. I like and that speaking of folks, because that's why I love feeling that one. Because, yes, when I'm breaking out the cocoon right now, just becoming that human butterfly and just oh, greater things are obviously coming. So I'm not going to focus on anything else, but the great, positive, wonderful results that must be coming very soon. <laughs> well, that Definitely. One. And that's what the important lesson you've had in life. Like, is that one of the most important ones? The angles that you've learned from just being positive and uh, and taking these wise steps, right? Yeah, I think the most important lesson I've learned in life is just to never give up. Never, 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 never give up. The answer is out there. And also, we, each person is their own best healer. Because only oh, only you know what's going on with you, you know, personal life inside in everything that you do. 
Um, someone can offer you, you know, a pill or an herb or something like that, but they don't know the whole you. Only you know the whole you. And so you've got to put it, you, you've got to, I, I believe that people need to take charge of their own health and um, and trust themselves, you know, trust trust that God will give them the answer. Trust that God will lead them in the right ways. I love, I love, obviously. <laughs> I love how he directs our path all the time. Well, that's wonderful. It was good to hear, and I'm quite grateful to see the steps to move forward with you and everything, and just those good ones. Oh, yeah. But definitely, I'll focus on getting the wild stuff, <laughs> even though the wild fish and the wild. Um, <laughs> yeah. And those are the more important, healthy angles. So that's very important because I, <laughs> yeah. I love doing everything smooth and I take my deep breaths and not have to worry about anything. Oh yeah, deep breathing. That's that's also really important too. Hello. My mindful breathing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you just keep your loving heart. I love enjoying and getting those understanding tips from you on that one. And so yeah, if there's anything else, you can just look forward to getting to know you. Yeah, more. we'll just get it on your website, right? And just go connect on that one and see yeah. what else we'll gain. Thank you so much for um, spending this time with me. It was an honor to meet you and to um, speak with you and learn more about you and your story. Also, your story is very inspiring. Thank you for everything that you do for the community as well. No, well, no problem. It's always cool. And like attracts like. And that's why we're all connecting here. <laughs> or not all, but yeah, you know me. So we just keep that positive heart. And you're just very strong. And I love all the tips because, man, the Philippines, like you said, are all thin as well. So I love hearing that one. You understand. <laughs> You guys making the um, noodles and everything over there, but you just as long as we make it from home, that's why it's much much better. As long as we well, do. well Philippines, we don't do a lot of noodles. We do a lot of rice, just rice. Oh, right. oh. yeah. <laughs> well, <we laughs> clarity on that. <laughs> but making it from home is just always the better the other one to back up on. Huh? Yeah. Well, you just have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and week and day. Let's just feel great. We're going to enjoy this whole time getting to know the contacts that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank All you. Right. you know, on that one, on that. Mm -hmm.